Shalom. Call Layla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukon Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles, a great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. I will choose their delusions. So the right hand, I want to briefly talk about the right hand of the Most High. The right hand of the Most High is more treacherous, more subtle, more cunning than the left hand. So the Most High is the greatest chess player of all times. He'll bluff you, fake you out. He'll make you think he's going left, and then he shifts gears and goes right, like Barry Sanders, the famous great running back from the Detroit Lions. So my point being is, brothers, we cannot afford to get emotional. The most high uses the most high uses slate of hand trickery i'm going to show you <coughs> let's read this genesis we're going to go to genesis 22 and 1 and it came to pass after these things that the most high did tempt abraham and said unto him Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Let's go into that word tempt. Why would the mo so I thought only Satan tempts? So the right hand is subtle, cunning. Let's go into this word tempt. <coughs> Somebody knows where I'm going with this. Tempt comes from the Hebrew. Strong's age, 5254. Nasa. 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 To test. To try. To assay. Temp. So we are going through a trial of test of faith. We're going to be proven. So the Most High orchestrates temptation, the tempter, to try our faith because we have to be proven. <clears throat> Let me tell a quick war story. Quick war story. There was a young soldier, infantry. He was a ground soldier. And he's traveling with his squad of about 10 men. They go into an abandoned home and they can hear a baby crying. And the troops go in, squad leader. Squad leader is the more seasoned leader, full of experience. And he's directing and guiding his men. <coughs> the squad leader says to the young troops, when they enter into the abandoned home, he says, whatever you do, don't touch the baby. The baby is just screaming to the top of his lungs. You see, the young soldier, full of emotions, ignores the command of the squad leader, the staff sergeant, E6. So the squad leader tells the young soldier, E1, don't touch the baby. <coughs> the young soldier responds, well, he's crying. He might be hungry. He may have lost his parents. We got to save him. The young soldier picks up the baby. There is a grenade 
explosive device underneath the baby. Three fellow squad members, including the young emotional soldier, all perish. Four members of a 10-man squad are now deceased because of an emotional man. What can you do with a crying baby out in a combat zone that gives away your position? Now you got to use resources and you got to use soldiers to protect that individual, which takes away from your combat capabilities. Because now you have a liability with you. So the squad leader's direction, don't touch the baby. Leave the baby alone. Let's get out of here. You see, you cannot be an effective leader if you're ran and driven by emotions. Emotions change like the wind shift and change directions. No stable leader is moving based on emotions or driven based on emotional feelings. Now let's read the story. <clears throat> Genesis 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the Most High did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. See? So, the Most High is testing Abraham. Our faith has to be tested. And we have to be proven as faithful servants, overcoming ourselves. The biggest enemy is the old man, the old inner man that just goes off what we can see. That just goes off how we feel or what we believe and been taught from the old Christian upbringing. So faith is measured by our confidence despite what we don't see. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. This is the subtlety and trickery of the right hand. So it's not behooving for us to get emotional, but follow the instruction booklet. So the Most High is showing Abraham the faith that he has towards his chosen ones. And Abraham Faith is being proven and tested. Because the promised seed is through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Isaac is Yahushua, is King Solomon. And the other thing that I saw when I read this story is Isaac's name means laughter. So the joke turns back around on Abraham. Because they did not believe in their old age, they would be able to bring forth a son. Let's keep reading. Genesis 22, verse 3. <coughs> and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went 
unto the place of which the Most High had told him. So we're seeing a foreshadowing of things to come. Yahweh Shai, sent of the Most High, would be become a sacrificial lamb. So everything that is written is written for our learning. So Isaac, being Yahweh Shai, would would become the would become the hope and the gateway back to the Father. Because the chosen seed is through that lineage. Let's read this again. And we're going to go to verse 4. Genesis 22, verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. But in Genesis 22, verse 6, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? <coughs> so this is showing us that Yahweh Shai would become that lamb, which is Isaac. Let's go here. I think it's 1 Peter 1 and 19. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's go to verse 16. Because it is written... Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. So a blood sacrifice is required according to our law. That has not changed. The Most High does not change. So when Israel fell off, the sacrifice of lambs and goats were no longer sufficient. We needed a perfect blood sacrifice unto the Most High to cover the sins of Israel. That's written in Old Testament law. Go to verse 19. <clears throat> but with the precious blood of Hamashiach as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So Yahweh Shai is Isaac. He is the perfect blood sacrifice that was offered up for the sins of the nation of Israel. So Abraham is showing us Father Abraham is showing us the faith and love that he has for his firstborn, Israel. His, when I say firstborn, I mean chosen ones, anointed. So the same faith that, I, that Abraham exercised, the Most High showed that same faith towards 
the promises of Israel, inheriting the kingdom, getting mercy, being redeemed. Let's go back to that lamb. Genesis 22. One moment, let's go up right here. Genesis 22, verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So the Most High is a bad man. So here it is, he's showing us that Isaac is Yahawashai, is the sacrifice to come in the future for the sins of Israel. Verse 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which the Most High had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. So when we read Isaiah chapter 53, Yahweh Shai is beaten with the stripes of men, bound, becomes a sacrifice. So this is showing us Prophecy to come. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. <coughs> Go down to verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest the Most High, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me, taking the emotions out of the Lord's will, being a faithful woman, so to speak from the perspective of the daughter of Zion, the Israelites, elect. How do we please the father? Not picking up the crying baby and wetting our diaper as a grown ass man, but doing what we are commanded to do. No man can afford to be conquered by the inner man, the inner old man that must be defeated, that must be subdued, that must be conquered. So this truth, if it hits you the right way, it really, it kills the old creature. This is the process where we are born again through the spirit, the will of the Most High's commandments. Let's read this again. <clears throat> Genesis 22, verse 12. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. For the Most High would demonstrate this faith by giving us his only begotten son, Yahawashai, which is Isaac. What else did we take away? Is the Most High use a slate of hand. Trickery is mastered on the right hand. The dragon level uses trickery, subtility, and slate of hand. So you can make the argument that the Most High tricked Abraham. And so what? It's for the greater good 
of the nation of Israel. We die in place without a sacrifice. Let's go to verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. <coughs> so the Lord is dealing with Mount Zion or Mount Taziawan. That mount represents his memorial, his nation, his heritage, the chosen ones of Israel elect. So what if Abraham became emotional? What if he what if he just went left and the most high laid out instructions? So even what we're seeing today, the most high uses slate of hand all the time. So are we going to become rebellious and fall out of the truth because of our emotions? Or are we going to continue to march forward, moving onward and upwards towards the light? Let's go here. <clears throat> the Most High chooses our delusions, slate of hand, trickery, to test the faithful, to test those that are serious about this truth, about the promises, about doing the will of our husband. Husband means planter, which is the most high father. <coughs> Let's go here. See? Go to Isaiah 66. One moment. Let's go up here, right here. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. We chose our own way, we decided to establish our own salvation. We decided to go with how we think, how we feel, what we believe. What is the will of the Heavenly Father? So the Most High chooses our delusions when we are not right inside and are being driven by the old raggedy man that we used to be. Let's go into that word delusions. <coughs> delusions comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H8586. To Alulim. To Alulim. Wow. Vexation. A tyrant. A baby. Wow. A baby. Being super emotional, like a child crying because of the Most High's word, his prophecies. It shall come to pass, saith the Lord, that in all the land, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two third Israelites not making it makes Israelite men cry. They hate it. Esau, Edom, not getting salvation, makes Israelites cry. See? Unbelievable. Wantonness, caprice, vexation. This is beautiful. So the right hand can send you on a wild goose chase if we're not right on the inside. Isaiah 66, verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, 
but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. The prophets are speaking, the mouthpiece of the Lord, every day. Verse 5, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. So through patience, through suffering, through faith, waiting. I was telling a story earlier today and yesterday the uh, those that are familiar with football, the the experienced linebacker that sits behind the defensive line, he does not buy the play fake. He knows it's a pass, so he does not go in towards the line of scrimmage. If he does and bite the play fake, he gets faked out, and the pass gets thrown. The football sails over his head. That's going to be the unfaithful. The ships are going to sail over the head of the non-believers. The unfaithful. So that experienced linebacker see that it's not a running play. It's a play action pass. Isaiah 66 verse 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. So Isaac's sacrifice foreshadows or show us the deliverance of the nation of Israel. Shows us that the Son of the Most High is our way back to be reconciled to the Father re-establish as friends with the Most High. Reconciliation brought back. Only the nation of Israel made a covenant with the Most High through Moses. And under the new covenant, we had a chance to return through the Lamb, Yahweh Shai, which is Isaac. Isaiah 66, verse 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who have heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So we are undergoing the stripes of men, the birth pains, which is tribulation, the trials and tests of our faith, being tried, tested, and proven, made fit for the master's use. The birth of the nation of Jacob. When you look at that word, delivered, who's being promised deliverance? Jacob, the Israelites. <coughs> what happens when a baby comes out of a mother's womb? The baby is delivered. Let's try something real quick. Deliver Jacob. Well, look at that. Amos 6, verse 8. The Lord God hath sworn by himself, saith the Lord, the God of hosts, I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate his policies. Therefore will I deliver up the city with all that is therein. So yeah, Jacob fell. Jacob was temporarily cut off, 
but the Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. So the Israelites are going to get redemption, deliverance. Let's read that. Micah 5 verse 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion among the beasts of the forest and as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who if he go through both tread it down and tear it in pieces and none can deliver. Let's try it this way. So Israel is going to be restored. It's going to use. All right, let's go to Isaiah 59. Right here. Isaiah 59, verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. So Israel is being purchased, purchased by the blood of the lamb. When we look at that word redeemer or redeemed, uh, let's go to Matthew. Should have went here first. The birth of the nation of Jacob means Israel is being delivered. Go to Matthew 1 and 21. Right here. I don't know why I didn't go here first. Matthew 1, verse 21. Let's go to verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Let's look at that word saved. Save comes from the Greek. Strong's G 4982. Sozo. Sozo. Well, look what we have here. Deliver. Right there. I just highlighted it. So the nation of Jacob is being birthed into dominion and rulership. Power. The birth of the nation of Jacob. Through the mediator, Yahweh Shai, the intercessor. This is heavy. Deliver or protect, save, preserve. So when you read Isaiah 14, verses 1 through 3, the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. That's the birth of of the nation of Jacob. Now let's go back and close out in Isaiah 66, verse 8. <clears throat> the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Beautiful. Who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such things, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Second address 6 and 9. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. Let's go to verse 9. Shall I bring to the birth 
and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord. Let's read it again. Isaiah 66, verse 9. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy power? So these contractions don't stop. The baby cannot be pushed back into the womb. Tribulations are the contractions. Jacob's trouble. Everything is set in motion. So the Lord is in control. And the unbelievers are being deceived, misled, biting the bait of the play fake, play action pass. And you're a young linebacker getting food every time with the football sailing over your head. We are patiently waiting for the deliverance of Israel, the firstborn, which means the chosen anointed ones, just like Isaac was. I think that's... Um, Um, man, I'm trying to remember what it said. I think it's in Exodus 4 and 22. There it is. Exodus 4, let's go to verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Just like ancient Egypt going through afflictions for over 400 years. Let's go to verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, Isaac, Chosen, anointed. Israel, elect, chosen, anointed, are going to be delivered. Let's go to verse 23. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. So Isaac slaying, excuse me, Abraham slaying Isaac was a notion to show us prophetic events to come. Yahweh Shai being offered for the sins of Israel to bring forth the new kingdom under Jacob led by Yahweh Shai occupying the throne of his father. So pro pro I'm getting excited. My voice is drying out. Prophecy takes precedence over emotions, feelings. And sometimes the most high uses a slate of hand, trickery. That's important to know, even in these last days, he's doing it again on multiple facets. All right. So I'll go ahead and close out there. And then many people get confounded when we learn that the Most High tells Abraham to go sacrifice his son, but then turn around and says, no, don't do it. So we're witnessing certain aspects of that in these last days. It's going to look like we're not going to make it, but get delivered. Lord willing, I'm amongst that number of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekwah Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to those that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. 
Much love and respect to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David. Watch the play action fake. Watch the slate of hand. And we got to stay faithful. And we got to stay obedient to the will of the Most High. Come Yeshua and abide the bow. Barakatham. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.